So I've been requested to touch upon late stage capitalism and this is something I've touched upon briefly before. Late stage capitalism is really just an erroneous, intellectually dishonest term. The reason for why that is is because you're living under a mixed economy between capitalism and socialism. It's a corporatist system because that's the natural state of what happens when you mix capitalism and socialism together. Socialism strangled capitalism half to death through the strong government regulation or some people might technically say that it's a corporatocracy which is basically where the corporations run the government. How feudalism, the system that preceded capitalism in Europe, died and to learn from that death something about the processes that bring about the end of a system because I think they're at play in capitalism. He was saying that after the Roman Empire things decentralised but feudalism's got nothing at all today with you know decentralisation it's everything to do with that of collectivism, political centralisation where the centralisation of power ends up in the hands of the few the aristocracy where it's the absence of the individual, the individual's liberty etc and you had the communal ownership of property it's the very reason why you face the tragedy of the commons. So for him to try and compare the feudal age and why feudalism died off to that of capitalism is just erroneous because capitalism is to do with the free market. There's a joke floating around on social media. Anytime an aspect of the modern economy feels particularly ironic or unfair or absurd, it's labeled late capitalism. Just like that when they say, oh look at the 2008 financial crisis, yet they're using terms such as bailouts etc. It's all to do with socialism, forcing people into a collective group to force society to collectively, keyword collectively, to redistribute to pay for the losses of others. In other words, socialising the losses and privatising the gains through fixing of the interest rates that enabled them to you know, lend out large mortgage loans as well of course fixing the ratio high they again try to blame the market the notion of competitive capitalism that adam smith was referring to died in around 1870-1880 at a time when electromagnets were used for the second industrial revolution to create telegraph systems later with edison electricity those companies could not be competitive they were monopolies. This isn't a type of capitalism today, it's anti-capitalism. Capitalism is market entrepreneurship. In other words, it's not political entrepreneurship. It's not about special interest groups and special interest favours in order to further the agenda to beat out competition. Because that's essentially how the monopolies, oligopolies and cartels come around. It's through setting down barriers to entry into the market by using socialism. How bad the economy has gotten under neoliberalism. So in 1980, up until 1980, workers pay used to be in correlation to productivity. So if you produced more and you made more profit, workers got more money. Well, in 1980, that stopped. So now productivity and wages are decoupled. So it doesn't matter how much people make, it all gets sucked up to the upper 1%. People just go away believing the utter crap that he spouts. As you can see here for this quote, what Tom DeLorenzo was pointing out, is that between 1975 to 1991, it was not the same bottom 20%. How they look at the government statistics, they look at the wages as something static. So that is to say they think that the people in the bottom 20% in 1975 is the exact same people in 1991, and it's not the case. Instead, what you saw was the bottom 20%. Most of it had left the bottom 20% and moved up the ladder over that decade-long period. By 1991, a new bottom 20 20% would enter the market. In other words, the rich were getting richer and the poor were getting richer faster. By extremely expensive, unnecessary, and even tone deaf things, this too is branded late capitalism. Everything is branded late capitalism. You don't understand. If you don't want socialism, when you go to the store and you see that there's no paper towels, then you, you must be a Trump supporter. He's actually mocking the entire thing. It's all late stage capitalism, etc. Every economy is going to be faced with such a problem and every system is going to be faced with a problem if you've been faced with lockdowns. But that's the fault of government because of restrictions on businesses, restrictions on drivers, etc. Like you've seen in the recent event. Driven by the new individualism, had retreated into their own private worlds. New individualism. What's he talking about, this new individualism? 
individualism, you see how sleek it they are with their language. Since when did a mixed economy between individualism and collectivism, where collectivism strangles individualism half to death, become a new individualism? How is it a new individualism when you force society into a collective group in the name of collectivism and then forced society to collectively pay a tax to redistribute to pay for the losses of others? That's collectivism. That's not a new individualism. In your mind, this kind of capitalism isn't working, a carbon-based economy isn't working, dictatorship after dictatorship suddenly looks illegitimate and weak and stupid. Fuck. I cannot think of anything more stupid than a person to say it's a new type of capitalism. Since when was the mixture between capitalism and socialism, the mixed economy, where you see public and private sector and you see all the government intervention where the government strongly controls and directs through strong government regulation over the private sector and subsidises private industry through all the use of socialism. Since when was a mixed economy where socialism's heavily involved new type of capitalism? Again, it's that intellectual dishonesty that drives me nuts. There's capitalism and there's only capitalism. Capitalism is not anything else. It's an individualist system. To say that capitalism is something today correlative to that of collectivism is just stupidity in of itself. Collectivism's another word synonymous to the word socialism and I've pointed this out numerous times before. You can see there the definition of what a collectivist is. You can see there by the definition of collectivism. You can see there it's correlative to that of socialism. How on earth can capitalism be a type of collectivism? It just isn't. Capitalism is antinomous to the word collectivism, meaning it's the opposite. Capitalism is an individualist system and I've pointed out again, there is the definition of individualism. Individualism is very clear of what it means. It means the free market. The reason why they want you to believe that this is a new type of capitalism is so that they can try and project the blame off onto capitalism and say, well, here's why you need socialism. It's just nonsense, folk. Capitalism has been embraced in the West for generations, transforming how societies lived and worked in the process. But its time may be running out. Democratic socialists like Bernie Sanders and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez have slammed the economic system, and even billionaires like Warren Buffett, Mark Benioff and Ray Dalio admit the system is failing many. Now it's like I've stated before, like that Nick Howner, and he stood, and I can't exactly show you the clip, it was to do with a TED talk and it's because of copyright issues, and he gave that speech about how awful capitalism is and how it's failing. The reason why they're coming out and speaking negatively about capitalism, they're better benefiting from the socialist special interest favours they get for government. In other words, they oppose the free market. The reason why many of them oppose the free market, competition that was more efficient than themselves would wipe the floor with them. Those who were incompetent, those who weren't really good with business, who were inefficient, would lobby government for special interest favours for socialism in the economy in order to eliminate their competition. That's why they're speaking all that rhetoric, because they're benefiting from it. The mindset that he kind of of, uh, displays inadvertently by speaking about it in these terms, to me, says more about our economic system than it does the actual subject itself. Take a look. Video games are a real problem. They're a real problem. You know why? Because they're in fun. Addictive. And you don't, yeah, well, I'm, I have a real problem with them. And you, you, you do them and they're real exciting, but you don't get anywhere. His fear as an avid video gamer himself is that it's too addictive and by video gaming, then you're not accomplishing anything. Now, to me, what this speaks to, honestly, is a capitalist mindset. Because that capitalist mindset is uh, as follows. Time is money. So while you sit around wasting your life away, you could be doing things that make you more useful. Whilst I can understand where he's coming from to a certain extent, that's not necessarily the case of the context of what Joe Rogan was basically saying. For all you know, he could have been speaking about from a mental health perspective, and it's true of what Joe is basically saying. Maybe it could be a case of improving your mental health. Maybe it could be a case of you going to the gym to improve, maybe lifting weights, or maybe losing weight or something. Doing something productive with your life, rather 
than of course sitting playing games and that's what he's perhaps meaning well it's a bit dangerous perhaps because they're addictive and you're wasting your life away when you could be doing something more productive to improve yourself that doesn't necessarily mean to say that he's speaking about capitalism and earning profits etc and that's exactly what I mean these people just take things out of context and they just jump the gun is because again we are at end stage capitalism and uh, now the working class has essentially been reduced to crabs in a bucket if you've never seen a bunch of crabs in a bucket before what happens is they all try to climb on top of each other and then they reach for the top of the edge of the bucket so they can pull themselves out of the bucket the other crabs see a crab above them and try to use them to climb up and then they take their claws and go and they try to climb up the one crab and then they all fall back into the bucket crabs in a bucket that's what's happening to the working class now because there's so few jobby jobs out there because apparently you can't just go outside and go to the magic job tree and pick a magic job off of there and you know go to jobbyville with your new job since apparently that's not a thing uh what's going on is that uh all the crabs in a barrel are sitting around fighting each other over the scraps from Jeff Bezos' lunch table. The analogy is using of the crabs in the bucket where one's trying to climb all the other. He's basically trying to say that capitalism's this dog-eat-dog -dog world. They're trying to fight one another over these jobs. But why is there such a problem in the job market? How's that the fault of capitalism that you've strangled the market half to death? It was socialism's fault for artificially fixing the interest rates and manipulating it throughout the 20th century, etc. It was their fault for stripping away the free market money, in other words gold, and they imposed upon the market a currency you didn't even ask for. The more that they print in circulation of the currency, the higher the inflation grows. So in other words, they've created an inflationary problem and then they projected the blame off onto capitalism, over-regulate the private sector, even creating an unemployment problem through their minimum wage laws etc. And after creating such a problem and even causing problems through government lockdowns, after they've done all that, they then have of the magic and the audacity to turn around and say it was all the fault of capitalism. Unbelievable folk. Well, I used the term mega machine from Lewis Mumford and uh, it's based on three pillars basically. One is the endless accumulation of capital in an endless circle of profit and reinvestment. This system the mega machine has emerged 500 years ago in Europe in very long and harsh social struggles. And so it's also has been called the capitalist world system and so on. You don't live under a free market economy, you're not living under individualism and mercantilism dominated the earth before that of the British Industrial Revolution and dominated throughout the British Industrial Revolution itself and right up to this day with what you see of corporatism. Unfortunately with the rise of Abraham Lincoln, mercantilism won in the end. There's nothing in the study of economics more important than the information of profits and losses. Profits is the information conveyed by the consumer's demand. It's telling you the information of consumer's needs and wants. How the hell do you expect to be efficient? Irrespective of whether you talk about looking after the environment, how do you expect to be efficient without the information of profits and losses? When you work for your own you know, money, you've got a risk involved of making such a loss. So you're going to be more cautious over how you spend your own money, look after your own property. You face a financial penalty if you personally do not. Someone owns private property, they're going to look after their private property because it can either appreciate in value or depreciate in value. Now, throughout recorded history, in the absence of profits, what you've seen, governments have no accountability because it doesn't have to work for your money. You've seen that with the Soviet Union where it contaminated rivers and lakes and all sorts. Even devastated the ROC, but he wants you to believe that somehow capitalism's the problem. Marx was right about the late stage of capitalism, which is what we're in now. So what the late stage of the late stage of capitalism, they hate markets. They build giant monopolies, Google, Facebook, Citibank, Bank of America, etc. Uh, and then they destroy as Amazon. I mean, Amazon, uh, you know, has destroyed more small businesses than probably any other entity in the United States. Uh, they hate they hate the free market. Uh, so they build monopolistic markets. Uh, they impoverish 
uh, citizenries until they, they function as little better than serfs. And then in order to continue their profit margins, they begin to cannibalize the state itself. So this guy is actually writing what he's saying about how they hate free markets, etc. Where he's going wrong, in my view, late stage capitalism, and he's going along with that. We don't live under capitalism. It's the mixture between capitalism and socialism. He's absolutely spot on because he's basically telling you that they hate free markets and it's why they set down all these barriers, why they were lobbying for socialism, for special interest favours. That way they can create this monopolistic system. Capitalism is failing. What started as a crisis of the finance system has spilled over into social upheavals, civil wars as in Syria and Ukraine and upset the geopolitical balance. If we don't find an alternative to the neoliberal model of capitalism, whose crisis is at the centre of all these developments, the world will be in chaos by 2050. Capitalism was nothing at all to do with the financial crisis. It was to blame on socialism through all the intervention, etc. It was to blame on socialism, number one, because of the government protectionism, protecting the bad banks from failing, in other words, socialising all the losses, protecting failure from failing through the use of socialism to force taxpayers to pay for all their losses. It was also the fault of socialism through the fixing of the interest rates that they wouldn't let the market be they wouldn't let the market determine what your interest rates are, in other words, the market value. Instead, they wanted to try and control the market, they tried to control the interest rates that encouraged the large-scale lending and, and borrowing, etc. Socialism is a large part of the problem, and through the socialist government protectionism, they enabled that problem to occur. If you were living under a free market economy, that problem would never have occurred. We can learn from history, or we can be condemned to repeat it, and in the hope of not doing the latter, I want to do a little learning. He's got the audacity to even come out with that when he's a Marxist. The Soviet Union was a disastrous failure. We've seen the disastrous failure of socialism in China, a disastrous failure in the likes of Cambodia, North Korea, South American countries like Argentina, etc., and Venezuela. It was socialism that created their mess. Every single time socialism failed, they tried to project the blame off elsewhere, and that's all socialists have ever done. When United Airlines forcibly removed a customer, that was late capitalism. When tons of Americans are forced to crowdfund their healthcare, that's late capitalism. When rich people buy extremely expensive, unnecessary, even tone-deaf things, this too is branded late capitalism. A lot of people have that view of late stage capitalism because they're looking at things like all these higher prices, whether it's the cost of their education, the cost of healthcare, especially when you speak about that today with the United States of America. Even although it's through the use of socialism that caused the education cost to go through the roof, ensuring of government subsidies, etc. And it was the fault of all the socialist government interventionism from the AMA monopoly, the third party payer system, the over regulation of the private private sector, etc, etc, but capitalism gets the blame for it. So the idea of the brewer, the baker and the butcher goes and is replaced by General Electric, by Ford, today by Google, Facebook, Amazon and so on. That is not competitive capitalism. It's a market of monopolists. Because the companies are huge, they need a lot of money to finance them. So the banks consolidate. So you have mega banks and mega companies. The way in which monopoly capitalism evolved created socialism for the bankers and for the very rich and the arena of the unfettered market for the many. He was right about everything else to that extent, to be fair. And it's intellectually dishonest again. He says the unfettered market for the people. How the hell is it the unfettered market? If you were someone that tried to start up your own business, is it unfettered? The fact that you have to jump through all the red tape and everything? Your private sector is completely over-regulated by the state. How the hell is an over-regulated market an unfettered market? It makes no logical sense whatsoever. Close your lips, top and bottom are actually like late stage capitalism. It's kooky, it's weird, it's got attitude. I mean, would anarcho-socialism have the sass to sell jeans with mud on them? Paying people slave wages to make jeans, you then sell at massive profits so that rich people can look like they don't earn much? I actually kind of find it funny. That's so dumb, it's almost hot. It's just so good at embracing contradiction. I think that's really what I'm loving about it right now. Like, it sells sports gear by appropriating feminist message framing while paying the women in his factories like literal slave wages. 
Slavery is something by force. That would mean that the capitalist is forcing them to work in their company because at the end of the day they had to go through a job application process and everything. And these are the same people that don't understand you've got the minimum wage, those who basically enter the job market and are you know working in low skilled. This isn't the same thing as people who work in skilled labour. Capitalists have to compete for skilled labour, therefore wages drive up. People, you know, if they're willing to pay for something at such a price, they will pay the price. Therefore, the capitalists can get away with selling at such a price. The reality is, see if the demand wasn't there for that price, the price would be forced down. And another thing that I've got to point out is the very fact that when it comes to wages, it's no exception to the laws of supply and demand. Now, I had an argument just recently and I see people constantly posting this crap. They look at the Manchester City place. Now, this guy is a world class player that's in very high demand and there's only one of him. They don't understand that the reason why he's so valuable is because of scarcity. Likewise, when you look at the nurse, okay, she might be valuable, but she's easily replaceable. There's probably a lot of people who are qualified to do the job who just perhaps are not even working in the NHS, therefore she isn't as valuable. Now, Bob Murphy gives the perfect example. Well, here's a five dollar Bible and then there's this seven hundred and fifty dollar Xbox, well, oh, this is just so unfair. And consumer preference says, well, they value the Xbox at such a price, they're willing to pay, and of course, the high demand over the quantity of what's available. Now, of course, the cheap Bible, people might think to themselves, well, it's only worth five dollars, oh, how terrible, where are people's priorities? I'm not saying that healthcare isn't important. I'm not saying that people don't have such high demand for healthcare. What they don't understand is the laws of supply and demand and how it all plays into wages. For some strange reason they seem to think that wages are somehow an exception to the argument of the laws of supply and demand. That's why when you've seen the large flood of immigration flooding in, you've seen wage suppression and they still don't get it. The truth of it is I don't know whether capitalism is at its end um, and I don't think anybody else does either. And usually the ending is something we become very clear about years after it happens. Quite convenient he says that because the end of capitalism came about the end of the free market economy and then stepped this whole corporate system because of the mixed economy. And then, ah, yeah! That old lady has to work her fingers to the bone, yeah! I don't think people know exactly how <laughs> bad the disparity is between the rich and poor. Because they don't, a lot of people, regular Americans, they don't know the super rich people personally. Right. So they don't see how bad that, that gap is. Like I've stated before, folk, these people don't even understand what wealth is. See if wealth really was down to your wages, the Venezuelan people would be stinking filthy rich. Despite having all that paper currency, they could easily jump in the garbage truck and just gather all that paper money if that would make them rich. But the problem is, they can barely even buy one toilet roll with it, so they're not exactly wealthy, are they? Wealth is what you call consumption consumer consumption. And I'm not saying that, of course, there isn't an issue. The struggle that people go through in terms of trying to buy things because things are going up in price, etc. The reason for why that problem has occurred is because his socialism took away the gold standard, the free market money, and imposed a currency upon the market that the market did not ask for and were running the printing press and sword inflation through the roof. See, next time you see people like him complaining about the cost of living and the cost of goods and services in the, in the economy, blame him. Blame all his social nonsense because he was the one who got government to restrict the market in terms of its productivity which would which by the way a higher level of productive output would reduce your costs and secondly through all the money printing that's resulted in the inflation to spiral out of control but they want to blame capitalism because we covered it you know and we're right in the middle of it that things went wrong with it but to me, it's a bigger moment than 1989, the fall of the Berlin Wall. It's a bigger moment than 68. It's, it's the turn of history back towards the possibility that everything you see outside this window, this financially corrupt, hierarchical world, could one day Woo! be changed in a way that favours human beings. 
You look at, for example, that boy at the end and he's pure, you know, excited about it all. Oh, it could work for the people. Yeah, very good. I mean, what's his idea? Socialism? Working for the people? Where has socialism ever worked for the people? You show me an example on the entire planet Earth where that has ever existed. The conversation about capitalism in its current form has been so loud that leaders here at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, are questioning its relevance in the world we live in today. So will we soon see the end to capitalism as we know it? Capitalism is defined as an economic, political and social system in which property, business and industry are privately owned by individuals and companies, not the state. They don't touch upon the fact that capitalism, and they do concede to a varying extent because these were the same people who spoke about the unfettered market, right? That's their concession to say that capitalism is the market being left be to regulate itself. If they concede on that fact, then of course they're not describing a capitalist system to and she mentions about the World Economic Forum, yeah, those communists who are obsessed with a communist one world government. Yeah, of course they're going to come out with such garbage, as if by magic, along comes a pandemic and all of a sudden, oh, it's all the fault of capitalism. You notice how it's always a crisis that comes along, something engineered just to say, oh, capitalism isn't working because it's all an excuse and anybody that's got a brain to think for themselves can see right through the complete and utter shite. Amazon wins FAA approval for Prime Air drone delivery fleet. That's right. Not only does Amazon not have to pay any of, of their uh, delivery drivers for their newfangled apps as they try to cut people from finding the new Walmart app, um, as, as Amazon goes out of its way to hire as few people as possible, and the ones that they do hire uh, who are actually on their payroll and they're responsible for, they work into the ground. No, 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 no. Now, just because you thought it couldn't get worse, Amazon now finally got permission for the government to start flying drones to your house with boxes of shit from Amazon, thus removing all of those delivery drivers who are sitting outside the Whole Foods and all the third stage delivery drivers in America, the ones who are driving the small Amazon vans or their own vehicles that are taking things from the final uh, post office to the final destination being your house. What automation's done throughout history, even throughout the industrial revolution, right to this time period, jobs are lost, but they're reallocated into another area of the market and they free it up and it ends up creating more jobs than what was destroyed. And this is apparently the late stage capitalism. I don't want to scare you, but there is a a rational case for panic. The OECD is among many forecasters predicting suppressed growth for the next 50 years. Inequality levels, they say, will rocket. And other economists worry about the impetus from higher education levels and the development of the global south being just a one-off. And if you add to this the demographic ageing problem, which Standard & Poor's says will make 60% of all country debts junk, and then climate change, what you're going to need is an economic system that works. And I, I don't need to go into the argument on the inequality because it's not a bad thing. However, he's going on about the whole thing to do with the climate change again. If anything, and even if you are a believer of climate change, if anything's going to fix the problem, it's capitalism itself. And how can he blame capitalism for the causes of the problem? He's using all these issues that you see today and then he projects the blame and says it's all the fault of capitalism for basically government creating barriers to entry into the market. Have that for a laugh. They've been building an electric. Henry Ford built a hemp electric car and they said, oh, this is nice, but hell no. And then, you know, yes. So the oil industry was able to even push the car man himself to just not even make the. Yeah. And there you've got the typical person who doesn't even understand capitalism. In other words, capitalism is being prevented and he doesn't even understand that. You have special interest groups that have used government, lobbied government for special interest favours, using socialism to set barriers to entry into the market, eliminated the free market and it's prevented the likes of Henry Ford doing no sort of things. That description that he just gave there, he thinks is capitalism, is actually anti-capitalism. Capitalism's exactly what the 
what would allow the freedom for you to enter the market and provide something that's anti-capitalism that's using socialism to prevent the market so folk i don't know if you've got anything you would like to add in yourself comment in the comment section below if you've got anything you would like to ask again comment and i'll be sure to get back to you be sure to like the video share the video and of course thank you for watching cheers